What's up, Internet? My name's Ori. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Today is Saturday, August 5th, day number four inside the Big Brother house. Uh, and where we left off after yesterday's video was with our four nominees, Jared, Kirsten, Felicia, and Corey. Up on the block, Riley winning HOH was going to have to choose between the four of them two to save, leaving the other two up for eviction. Uh, and it seemed like we were going to have Felicia and Jared come off the block with Corey and Kirsten being the ones left up. They were the ones that kind of have the least amount of trust with everybody uh, kind of going into the night. Uh, but then very late into the night, early in the morning for us on the East Coast, actually, as I was uploading yesterday's video, there were two conversations that took place uh, up in the HOH room. Uh, the first one was with Riley and Corey. The second one was with Riley and Sari. Uh, and after these convos, she really wanted to get to try and gain the trust of Corey. She really liked him and kind of sees him as like, you know, uh, a, a brother in there. And she really wants to kind of bring him in by trying to save him this week. That then would mean she would have to use either Jared or Felicia as a pawn. And well, Sari couldn't have that. So it's it's Felicia. And listen, Felicia's not thrilled with it, right? She's OK as long as uh, the target stays on Kirsten. She's she's fine with it, but she would definitely like to come down uh, if it's at all possible with the veto. Um, and uh, this is what happens. So after the nomination slash saving ceremony we had uh kirsten uh kind of crying we had riley crying both of them you know pretty upset uh i don't think it was that much of like it was like a big deal and like drama or fights happened i think it was just hard for them uh with riley if if this is hard uh, i don't i have bad news for you because it's only getting harder from here you're saving two people this is this is an easy one <laughs> you're not even making a hard decision so if this is the hard one for you uh here you're in trouble uh there may have been a little bit of extra drama uh with uh Corey. he might have been like a little smug when he was coming off the block uh again i don't think it was like a huge deal or anything but it might have been a little bit i think it was more about you know him being in the nether uh it's really gotten people thinking and we haven't heard much about it, but we did have him talk a little bit more about it uh, during the feed yesterday where he said, uh, yeah, he, he just went there and it said, hey, you survived the nether. Uh, the next person may not be so lucky. So it is uh, probably going to appear again here, especially if he's being honest about that. Uh, there are people that think he got some sort of power or disadvantage. Maybe he doesn't have a vote. Like, we have no clue what what happened to him down there. Hopefully, we'll find out a lot more about that on tomorrow's episode. Uh, but it's still something to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, other than that, we have Luke. Let's talk about Luke. Uh, so, in his bio videos, he talked about how he was going to kind of play dumb and kind of not go in there and, and try and be, uh, you know, the brightest bulb. And uh, he's doing a pretty good job at it, uh, except people are like, you can't be this dumb. <laughs> it's kind of backfiring on him. They're like, man, this this guy is either playing dumb or he's really dumb. And if he is really that dumb, we feel bad. Like J Jag's really like, if he's just dumb, I feel bad because I don't think he's that dumb. Uh, there were a couple of things he said where uh, one of them was he's like, Corey, you were on the block. I didn't even know, dude. <laughs> and they're like, come on now. He didn't know where the back door was. And he's like, what's that? Somebody's getting back door. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, definitely got uh, a lot of people kind of giving him a little bit of a hmm, kind of a, a, a thought about. Right. They're not 100 percent trusting in him. Uh, and that's going to come in later here when we start talking about the uh, groups that were made. Another person who is having a little bit of uh, spotlight put on her is McColl from Cameron. Cameron's pretty much nailed it. So one thing McColl 
didn't want to go in and tell everybody like, hey, I work in politics. So she went in there. She said she was like a, a charter school teacher. Um, Cameron was a little bit suspect of that, especially saying that she quit her job to come here. He's like, nobody quits a charter school job. Um, so he was a little bit sus of that. Uh, and then he actually kind of nailed it because he's made the connection with her being from D.C. He's like, I think she's in politics, which she is. Uh, so keep an eye on that as well. Uh, and they are on two different sides of the house at the moment, uh, because last night we had uh, two different named groups of five come together. Uh, but we do have a very strong two sides of the house here. And I'm going to debut for the first time this season, the way too early week one alliance chart. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is this early. It is here. We have it. And uh, it's probably all going to be wrong uh, in a day or two. Uh, but we have a few named alliances. First off, we have the handful, Riley, Jag. Cameron, Matt, and Blue, uh, this five-person alliance that came together last night up in the HOH room. And uh, you know what? Here's the problem. They're they're great. There's a, they're, you know, a, a good bunch that all have, you know, some good skills and 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 maybe they could really make a run at it. They kind of want to bring Corey into it. Uh, and they they think they have a good uh kind of relationship with Jared and they can bring him on in for this kind of like larger thing and even Sari they can kind of get her kind of involved as well uh here's the problem they were really sloppy everyone is pretty much on to them uh the other side all is like fully aware like oh yeah if we just count out the numbers we 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 know who's who's where uh Hassam actually watched them go up to the HOH room from the couch in the living room and ended up telling America, he's like, yeah, I just watched them all say they were going to bed, but go into the HOH room. So it was done very sloppily. They're in there saying like, oh, no one's going to figure out that we're together. It's like they everybody knows that you're together right now. Uh, so that is that is kind of an issue. Uh, on the other side, we have the bye bye bitches uh, named by Felicia, who uh, they were kind of chilling. Uh, McCole actually, uh, no, it was Bowie, excuse me, actually left for a second. Uh, and while she was gone, they were like, you know, should we do like a thing? Should we make this a thing? And Felicia just stands up. She's like, listen, the five of us, five of us were the bye bye bitches. And she points up to the wall to the great Janelle saying the iconic. Bye bye bitches. Uh, so there you have the bye bye bitches: Sari, Izzy, Felicia, McCole, and Bowie. The five of them, they are the bye bye bitches. Uh, they also obviously have Jared, uh, kind of on their side. Uh, underneath those uh, two, Jared and Sari, because they are the power couple. I I'm telling you right now, in every iteration of my alliance chart throughout the season. You will see Jared and Sari right there in the middle at the top until one of them is gone. That is your main strong power duo in this game until one of them is gone. There's nothing that will break them apart. I just it the only way it happens if it's like inevitable that one of them's leaving. That's the only way that it's breaking apart. Other than that, they will always have their best interests uh, in each other's uh, uh when they're making decisions. So underneath them, we have uh, two different three uh, person groups there. We've got uh, them and Izzy, who Izzy is the only person that we are fully aware of right now that knows Jared is Ceri's son. Um, what we've kind of been able to figure out is that she is not a Big Brother fan. We were aware of that when coming in, that she only started watching Big Brother uh, in January of this year. Uh, but it seems like she is a big Survivor fan, especially her girlfriend was a big Survivor fan and her favorite player was Sari. Uh, so she was able to make that connection. Uh, and it's probably one of those things where she's like, Mate, it, it, you're my girlfriend's favorite player. If, if I don't play with you, I'm going to be broken up with. Like, I have no choice. <laughs> uh, so uh, Izzy, Sari and Jared are definitely... Uh, a nice trio that you have there. And then there's also the trio of Jared, Sari, and Felicia. There was kind of a funny 
uh, little uh, moment where uh, the three of them were in uh, the storage room and uh, Sari and Felicia are standing there and they're, they're looking at Jared and Sari says, listen, Jared, no, no hard feelings, but this right here, putting her hand on, on Felicia's shoulder, this right here, this is my people. I, I, you're great and all, but this is, she's, she's, she's my, my one and she's still up on the block and we got to protect her. And Felicia's like, yeah, but you know what? We want to let you know, Jared, we really like you and we want to work with you. <laughs> They're just putting on this show for poor Felicia. <laughs> I, I honestly can't wait for Felicia to find out the moment Felicia finds out or the moment Felicia figures out is going to be amazing. I can't wait for that. Like that moment alone is something I'm just building towards. Um, so other things about the chart here, we've got, uh, the four there kind of underneath that chaos. Uh, you've got Corey, red America and, uh, his so Corey is 100% leaning towards uh, the handful side. He's got a really good relationship with Riley. Um, he might be a little bit sus, though. So while they were doing their meeting, there were multiple times where Corey was like in the have not room there in the HOH room. Like he knows there's a bunch of them in there. And like he even came to the door a couple of times, but like she wasn't letting them in. So <laughs> he's got to be a little bit sus of that. But. Who knows uh, how that's going to roll. Uh, Red, complete wild card. Uh, he could go either way. Sari uh, and that side of the house are are very sus of, of Red. They're not 100% uh, trustworthy of him. Uh, it, I, I shouldn't say very sus, but like there's, they've got questions. They're, they don't know if they can trust him or not. The other side doesn't know if they can trust him either. So he's kind of a wild card that could end up on either side. Um, H some. He is very much on the bye-bye uh, bitches side, uh, but he's not really in there fully, but I, he is leaning that way. He's kind of their Corey, right? Both of them are on the outsides. He might be a little bit suspect that something else is going on, but he definitely sees on the other side the handful, and he knows about that. He's filled in America, which makes me think she might lean a little bit towards the bye-bye bitches. But they also don't know if they can trust her because they think she might be with the other side. Uh, Sari and Izzy uh, last night were in the bathroom kind of counting off numbers. And then when they were doing that, they were actually a little bit confused. They thought Cameron might be more towards the middle, but definitely leaning that way. And that uh, America was locked in over on the handful. But I assume uh, Hassam will fill them in uh, on it uh, today on everything going on that he saw in uh, the living room last night uh, about what's going on and how America wasn't up there. So this is going to be a lot of new information. Plus, Jared is going to be filling them in on everything going on since their plan is to kind of keep building this. They want to have the handful and then they want to have uh, family style is the name that Blue came up with. But I don't think Cameron is fully committed. He's like, yeah, like we could do like the immediate family and the extended family. She's like, yeah, family style. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, family gathering. And like, <laughs> he was like trying, like he didn't like family style. <laughs> he really didn't. Uh, but that's their, their goal is to try and make, you know, the, the plus one type uh, scenario go on. Uh, so I'm sure Jared will be brought into that and then just fill in everything uh, to the other side as well. Uh, and then all the way down there at the bottom, we have some uh, pairings. Uh, these are just, you know, other than Jared and Suri, because that is the, the ultimate pairing. You've got Luke and Matt, but Matt also, it's going to be interesting to see how much he fills him in about the handful, because uh, Luke is not invited to that, even though they, all, they know that Luke and Matt are very close. Uh, Riley and Jag, uh, extremely close duo there, uh, but... Again, people kind of all see it. Uh, something also kind of funny is uh, Kirsten is going around apparently saying that Riley and Matt are in a showmance. And Riley actually was talking to Matt about this. And he's like, oh, man, that's funny. I kind of thought you and Jag were in a showmance. <laughs> so uh, kind of a maybe a little bit of love triangle going there for Riley, Jag and Matt. But she's like, nah, he's like my brother. He's uh, he's the goofball. I like go towards the goofballs 
um, Suri and Izzy, a very close bond. Uh, it, it started off actually with Izzy and Jared, but I think Izzy kind of quickly realized that Jared is not someone that you can really talk a lot of strategy with. He's the person that you kind of get the information from and then figure out what your plan's going to be. So her and Sari end up talking a lot of the strategy. Uh, but again, her and Jared also have the initial kind of contact, and that's how she was brought in to the whole Sari thing. Then she figured out the whole uh, mother-son thing. Uh, and then uh, we've talked before about Felicia and Sari being very, very close uh, and uh, a very tight bond between the two of them. Uh, and then Kirsten, she's kind of off on her own. And listen, I know there's maybe a lot of you going out there like, oh, no, like, is this Taylor all over again? It's, it's not really. So uh, here's the thing. Kirsten, I almost you could say didn't really do much wrong. Right. Uh, her biggest mistake, the biggest mistake she made was being in the room when the phallic five sorry the flaccid five no that's not it the the phalanx five uh were were formed and it's a completely it's as you see not on the board <laughs> it's an alliance that does not matter uh and i really don't even think she was the one who was initially behind it uh but jared definitely kind of uh, didn't like that she was maybe sniffing around the idea that uh, him and uh, Sari were uh, related at all because it seemed like she was maybe poking around that as well. But since she was also uh, involved with the uh, core four idea that was going to be happening with uh, Sari, uh, Felicia, uh, Kirsten, and McCole, and didn't tell them about the uh, phallic five, sorry, no, uh, flaccid five, no, uh, the, the phalanx five, since she didn't inform them about that alliance that lost a lot of trust with them and she became very sketchy to them and they didn't want to keep moving forward with her because she, then she started to be a little bit paranoid about other things and they just couldn't trust her, uh, that much. The one issue is with that is in almost any other season, she probably doesn't get caught for that because there isn't a mother and son working together, sharing information. So it does kind of suck in that way where the only reason I think that she's in a big pickle right now is it all started to kind of snowball when she was caught playing both sides, which she was playing both sides. You got to be careful playing both sides this early in the game, making commitments trying to form these big groups. And if you've got too many people on each, like she made an alliance with nine people, half the house on the first day, but two different groups of them. And that's a mistake. Even if, even if it only was figured out right away because there was a mother son combo there like that, even though that's the only reason, I, uh, and can you really blame? Can you really blame anybody for going, you know what? She was out there may maybe playing a little bit too hard. Everybody was making a lot of conversations and maybe Luke is, is another one who, who deserves to kind of get the spotlight. He was involved with that. Matt was there, but you know, Matt's done a better job of people kind of liking him. Uh, Luke is one that maybe is on the out. So maybe he would get uh, a little blowback and he's not being included in the handful five because they don't seem to really trust him because of that. Uh, Jared seemed to be really open with everything that happened. So everybody seems to be OK there. Uh, who else was there? Riley was there and uh, Jared and Riley. Oh, that was another thing. We talked about that yesterday with Jared confessing the phalanx, 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 whatever it is, uh, five to her, even though she was there. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been a, an interesting day uh, here in the big brother house. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how this goes with the veto, which will be played uh, today uh, pretty early. They told them that it was going to be happening early. Most of them went to bed pretty early. At least they tried. Uh, they ended up waking up and staying up, having little chit chats uh, up in the HOH room, in the kitchen, stuff like that. But not as much game talk. 
Uh, most of it was really around uh, those two big groups and then branching off those other things, right? Like maybe trying to pull in Corey, trying to pull in some other things. Uh, sh- keep keep the, the spotlight off them, you know, try and distract uh, to make sure nobody's on them as well. <laughs> but it doesn't seem like it's going well uh, with that at all. Uh, but what do you guys, th- what, excuse me, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, do you like any of these alliances up here on the board? Do you have any favorite players? Uh, what do you think of the game and how it's going so far? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like that this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Uh, also, hey, do, do you have a friend who likes Big Brother? Do you have a relative who likes Big Brother? Share this video. Share it with your friends, your family, your moms, your aunts. Moms and aunts love me. Uh, So share this video uh, wherever you can. Go on uh, and spread the word about what's going on here. Because I think we have a really great community. I was so happy to see so many of you come back uh, from last year down in the comments. Uh, So it's great to have you all back here talking about Big Brother. and this season has been fantastic, especially if you have a family member who hasn't watched Big Brother in a long time. If you have a friend who hasn't watched Big Brother in a very long time, uh, a co-worker that you're like, oh yeah, I used to watch that show, let them know. This show's been pretty good so far. Uh, We have another episode tomorrow, uh, and we'll be back with our, our live feed update for tomorrow. Uh, everything that happens today, as well as uh, we'll be covering what happens on the episode on uh, Monday's uh, coverage, as well as the live feeds uh, for Sunday. But thank you guys again so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you next time.